I do start with a title in mind. Um, sometimes it can be a, a, a silly title that something just sparks off a, a shape or a colour. Um, and a title to me is very necessary because they are visual records of ideas. So if I get that idea and that has a certain title, um, then that's what the title of the painting is going to be and I work towards that. I quite often have many titles which I have more titles than I have uh, and ideas than I can obviously paint. So what I tend to do is either make a very, very rough drawing or notes to myself, just like a shopping list really. This is the importance of a sketchbook, can be too representational or it can be just notes. Um, and I normally just pin them up on an enormous notice board on my, on my studio, date it, put the title, uh, and I know that when I come to paint that, that shape, those uh, images that I saw originally at that date, will come to mind. So titles are very, very important. And I, yes, they do come first. How do you know when you've made a mistake? Uh, you just do. Um, it's a shape just worries you. It's in the wrong place. It doesn't look right. You can hold your hand over a certain part of the painting and say, yes, it looks better without it there. Um, or you can sort of move it around and think, no, it should be this, this angle. Um, one tends often to overwork a painting and you have to think, is, is a painting going to be enriched or made better or the composition going to work by having it put there or taken away? So quite often I block parts of the painting out by holding paper over it and say, no, it does look better without that. So I'll, I'll take it out. So it's, it's that sort of thing. You have to just know if a shape works or if it doesn't, and you do get to know. Quite often, I, with the uh, sketches, I quite often cut them up um, and rearrange them. And sometimes the, the change of that syntactic structure, if you like, of a shape, um, looks better than the painting I'm doing. So I'd say, right, fine, I'm doing it in the wrong order. I'll move it around, change the composition. That's how you know. Do you enjoy painting? Uh, I can't imagine life without painting. Um, I don't enjoy it in the, in, in the sort of, as a relaxing uh, thing to do, um, but it's just part of my life. It's just a part of the thing that I do pretty well every day. And um, it's the only way I can really express myself. Um, seeing, seeing a finished painting or seeing a row of finished paintings in a gallery really excites me. So, yes, I, I, think, I, I think I must do. I just feel that um, it's all I can do, really. Do you have a favourite artist? Um, I have different artists whom I admire for different reasons. I mean, for example, people like... Um, Rembrandt or Velázquez for, for portraiture. Um, but I do admire philosophies of various painters. I, for example, I very much uh, admire the abstract expressionists like uh, Willem de Kooning, for example, or Jackson Pollock. Um, one of the people that I admire a lot, philosophy-wise, in a way, and certainly that some of the later paintings too, is Mondrian. Um, because he did, in a way, uh, he went down the sort of path that, that, I, that I'm doing, or vice versa, I should say. I, he started from nature, he started from traditional drawings of trees, and gradually, by many, many processes over many years, abstracted his work into almost uh, one, two, three colours, and, and in squares. And I can see the, the fineness of that, and that I like very much. Um, coupled with that accuracy of Mondrian, I like the freedom of abstract expressionists. I like paint to be paint. I like a drawing to, or a painting, to be as free as a drawing. So it, in a way, can be quite messy, if you like, not, not finished and beautifully tidy. But it's stated what you want to do. So I would say, for different reasons, those, those painters. What kind of artwork would you buy? Um, that's even a more difficult question. Um, yes, I think I would probably buy if I could afford, which of course it all means, because um, art is an investment, uh, really, um, would be Rothko, Mark Rothko, um, yeah, and Mondrian. I think those would be the people I would buy did, most. Did you enjoy art at school? Yes, I did, more and more. Um, I, even, even when I was at school, I felt that traditional drawing, which I like, and, and still do from time to time, this idea of 
of portraits and still life and uh, basic subjects. Um, even at school, I felt that I could push it further. I felt that I want to abstract shapes. Yes, I, I did. I've always enjoyed art. I've always thought that a lot of my relations are painters as well, um, my uncles and so forth. Um, yes, certainly. I've always liked drawing rather than writing, for example. Where do you get your ideas from? Uh, all sorts of peculiar ideas, um, ways really. They come just by accident. Um, sometimes it's by just seeing something that's a, a traditional landscape. Sometimes it can be something that's um, almost by accident. For example, I did one painting a little while ago which was um, based on um, some wallpaper that somebody sent me from, from Belgium when they were redecorating a, a house and I kept this little piece of wallpaper it had designs on it which I liked and it sort of played around the studio for a long time it never got lost um, and one day I was uh, making a collage and part of the collage went over the over this piece of wallpaper and that was a painting uh, and it just happened like that uh, there's also an area at uh, the university where we have coffee um, from time to time and um, it's, there's a surround, a sort of terrace surround and there's a, there's a seagull that everybody knows. And it has a habit in the afternoon of, of, um, of uh, almost laughing. And I, I have the painting written on my wall saying, Laughing Seagull. And that is going to be a painting one day. Um, that's, that's one way, by just sort of things that happen, just like that. But the other way I get ideas is, as I say, is from series. So one painting sparks off another. So they're sort of, in a way, related, like a conversation or from something that's musical. I do quite a lot of work based on music, musical themes. And then I need to uh, tailor the size of the board to the music, i.e. that music is normally written horizontally, and so too of my boards. So they'd be uh, 12 feet long by 3 feet high to emulate the music. So those are emotions, if you like. Does the type of music affect the painting in other ways? Oh, very much so. Um, I think certain music um, actually evokes a feeling, and colours evoke feeling. So, uh, to a certain way, they, they should be parallel. For example, I'm very fond of uh, Spanish music, and of course that has connotations of, of um, southern France, uh, Italy, um, Spain, so forth, where you get the warmth, the Mediterranean feel of, of the continental countries. And so they have to be portrayed, if you like, in reds and yellows, um, and that would be punctuated by, by black marks to, to if you give, give a structure, if you like, to the painting. Uh, you couldn't possibly do something that was a Spanish, had a Spanish theme in, say, dark blue. It just wouldn't work. Thank you. Thank you very much.